Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India everyone to our online NPTEL course environmental chemistry and microbiology. This course will be taught by professor Shudha Goel and myself professor Anjali Pal. We are from the civil engineering department IIT Kharagpur. We have divided this course into two parts. The first part is environmental chemistry that will be covered by me and the second part is environmental microbiology that will be taught by professor Shudha Guel. So, in my first module I have discussed about the acids, bases and salts. In the second module I discussed about the chemical equilibrium. In the third module I have uh, elaborated the chemical kinetics. In the fourth module, I have discussed about the catalysts and catalysis and this is my fifth module and lecture number 22, where I am discussing about the nitrogen chemistry. This is the part B. In my last lecture, I have covered the nitrogen cycle and nitrogen chemistry that was part A, this is part B. The nitrogen data, uh, why it is so important? In this lecture content, I will tell about the significance of nitrogen data. I will tell how we can determine the ammonia nitrogen. I will also discuss about the uh, how to determine the organic nitrogen and the nitrite and nitrate nit nitrogen. So, importance of nitrogen data as an indicator of sanitary quality. This is a very important figure. It is known, it was known for long time that polluted water would purify themselves with time. So, if you if you spend enough time and this is of course, the natural pollution. Say for example, you put some organic matter which is biodegradable organic matter uh, say for example, somewhere Okay, then, uh, say for example, in some um, uh, natural environment you throw it, then what will happen naturally it will be purified with time. Okay. The possibility of health hazard with this water would decrease with time, with time the hazard will decrease and temperature. So, if you, you, you can see here the effect of temperature, you can see the in the winter season and summer season. In the winter season, we know that temperature is um, lower compared to summer and this is the health hazard and then you can see that with time the health hazard is decreasing. So, water is becoming purified, okay. but in summer you can see it is it is going uh, faster. Okay. You, know, you have seen the kinetics, so this is the kinetics, so here it is a time. So, with temperature also, a temperature also has some effect and also that time. Okay. So, this is a natural purification okay. and if you can measure different types of nitrogen. In my previous lecture, I have already told that nitrogen is present as ammonia, nitrogen may be present as organic um, matter, nitrogen may be present as ammo, uh, nitrite, it may be present as nitrate. Okay. So, there are different forms of nitrogen. Now, you if you can measure these different types of nitrogen, how much is present in the water. Say for example, pollution starts here and then you can see with time how the nature of uh, uh, that um, combined form of nitrogen is changing. If you measure the organic nitrogen, then you will see that with time, this is the time, you will see that organic nitrogen concentration is uh, decreasing. 
this is the nitrogen uh, in milligram per liter. So, this is decreasing organic nitrogen is decreasing okay, with time and you will see that ammonia nitrogen the concentration is increasing and then it is increasing and it will go to a peak value and then it will again decrease. Now, in between you will see that nitrite nitrogen this is uh, increasing and then finally, it is decreasing and nitrate nitrogen it is uh, increasing uh, with time. Now, why it is so? Because say for example, you have polluted with some protein molecule. Okay. Then what will happen with time? The protein molecule will be first decomposed and it will form the um, uh, ammonia first it will form the ammonia that I have we have seen in the previous lecture. So, organic nitrogen means the protein molecule for example. So, organic molecule will be degraded. So, you will see that organic uh, nitrogen is decreasing then after the degradation what is produced ammonia. So, ammonia concentration ammonia nitrogen will be increasing and then finally, it is converted to nitrite and finally, to nitrate this is the highest oxidation state of nitrogen. So, ultimately it will be converted to it is of course, in the uh, aerobic environment. Okay. So, what is necessary then if we want to know uh, what is happening then we have to know how to determine it different forms of nitrogen we have to determine okay. that is the main thing. Now, why nitrogen data uh, otherwise also nitrogen data is very important to know. Say for example, high nitrate content uh, 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 content often causes methemoglobinemia in infants okay. this is a disease. Okay. So, uh, uh, so, there is some permissible limit. So, if it is beyond that then it may uh, cause this type of disease okay, in infants. Now, the in the biological treatment the reproduction of mi microorganisms are required. Okay. We have seen in all biological systems the mi uh, microorganisms should grow right. So, if uh, they grow then um, the waste should contain sufficient nitrogen for the organism because for the growth we always need the nitrogen separate example protein molecule is uh, uh, protein molecule contains nitrogen. Okay. So, determination of ammonia and organic nitrogen here it is very important okay. it is always required to know. Now, discharge of ammonia nitrogen and its subsequent oxidation can seriously reduce the DO level that I already told you in BFD okay. nitrogen analysis is important to assess the problem. Okay. Oxygen DO level should not go beyond some such some level okay. uh, then anaerobic condition will be generated that is not wanted. Okay. Then uh, determination of nitrogen are required to control the degree of purification produced in biological treatment. You all know this very interesting ammonia you know ammonia is very toxic. So, there is some permissible limit 0.2 milligram per liter permissible limit actually 0 0.02 milligram per liter. So, it should not go beyond this value and ammonium ion is uh, is not you know ammonia fertilizer ammonium sulphate. Okay. So, uh, this is uh, very much needed for plant growth. So, ammonium ion is not toxic, but ammonia is toxic. So, we have to know how much ammonia is present and uh, for that we need some method. So, method is very very important analytical chemistry is very very important for the environmental engineers that I will tell you okay. how to determine the everywhere the it is a nitrogen, but nitrogen in different forms say for example, here it is ammonia. Okay. Now, how you can determine the ammonia nitrogen so, I will explain a very uh, simple and very useful method that is Nestler's method. You, you know you are very familiar with this equilibrium I told you in my chemical equilibrium uh, lectures that ammonium ion is in equilibrium with ammonia plus H plus. So, if you want to shift this equilibrium towards right then what you have to do you have to take out this H plus last Eckler principle I already explained to you. So, how you can take out you have to make the pH alkaline. Okay. So, the, so, this is very important that will be required here when you determine this uh, ammonia nitrogen. Now, ammonia reacts this is the property ammonia reacts with Nestler's reagent to produce a brown color having lambda max 450 nanometers. 
you are uh, you are familiar with this because in some of my lectures I already told you that uh, spectrophotometer I explained spectrophotometer I also explained the spectrum or spectra okay, for nitrophenol reduction when I discussed about for nitrophenol reduction there you have seen some spectra okay, and you have seen some peak if you visible spectra uh, there is some peak absorption spectra. So, um, this absorption peak that is um, called where it is the maximum means absorption they, they are then it is called lambda it is the wavelength and uh, here the peak is uh, here for 50 nanometers it is a brown color. Okay. So, ammonia reacts with the Nestler's reagent to form a brown color which is having the lambda max at 450 nanometers. Now, what is Nestler's reagent? Nestler's reagent is nothing but this is the HgCl2 okay, and excess potassium iodide in presence of NaOH. So, basically it is an alkaline solution of K2 HgI4 and um, uh, this is the reaction how it is formed. Okay. So, basically uh, HgCl2 and Ki in presence of alkali it is forming this one. Now, the reaction of NHT with uh, this is represented as this is the um, Nestler's reagent that is the anionic part and then ammonia in presence of alkali it forms this is the uh, complex okay. this is a complex which has the brown colored uh, color okay. and it is a colloidal solution that is formed. Okay. This is the uh, balanced equation it is also known as Milan's base. Now, you can use this method for as a colorimetric method because some color is developed. So, if you use some uh, um, definite concentration of uh, ammonia nitrogen and you uh, mix the uh, you perform this uh, reaction then uh, as the nitrogen concentration is changing. So, color intensity will also be different and you can use it as a colorimetric method. Okay. It is the brown color intensity of the brown color is directly proportional to the amount of NHT present in the solution. So, you can use it as a uh, colorimetric method. Now, direct nestlerization of the sample may lead to serious error direct nestlerization means uh, you take the sample and you put it uh, you put the reagent that is the Nestler's reagent then you, you think that some brown color will be formed and you can use this as um, for uh, ammonia nitrogen determination, but it is not like that why because in the sample there may be other things also okay, and that will that may lead to serious error because of the presence of interfering substances. So, uh, so the direct method is not possible. So, ammonia must be separated from sample by distillation this is very important and here comes this one. Okay. Say for example, ammonia nitrogen what is ammonia nitrogen? Ammonia nitrogen is some type of nitrogen which is present either as ammonium ion or as ammonia okay. that is called ammonia nitrogen. It can be present either as ammonium ion or as ammonia. Okay. Now, uh, this, this equilibrium you have to consider why because if you want to um, um, uh, distill out this uh, ammonia as a gas okay. then you have to make the solution alkaline why if it is ammonium ion it will be solubilized in water. Okay. But you have to convert it to ammonia how you can convert you have to shift the equilibrium completely towards right side then you have to remove this how you can remove is just making alkaline okay. you have to make sufficiently alkaline and then you have to use the gel dust flask this is a some type of distillation flask okay. and there what you do you take the sample definite volume of sample then you can make the uh, solution alkaline by using say per some alkali say potassium carbonate you can use and then you have to um, heat it then what will happen the ammonia will be produced and it will be steam distilled there will be steam also coming out from the solution it is water solution so steam will be there. So, ammonia will be carried out with the steam and then it will be taken out it will be condensed to another flask. Okay. So, another flask and uh, there uh, either you can uh, 
take as some uh, sulfuric acid say for example, some acid you can take. So, that ammonia goes there and it is converted to ammonium sulphate. Then ammonia will not go out because ammonia is volatile. So, ammonia may go out also. So, you have to take proper care. Okay. So, then after that you can take you have to be sure that whole um, so from whole uh, so the from the solution whole ammonia has 100 percent has come out. Okay. Otherwise, the your uh, result will be wrong. So, this is the thing before boiling the sample water um, a buffer solution is added to maintain the pH in the range of 9.5 and the distillate is collected into an acid solution contained in a flask. After this, so uh, whatever interfering ions was there where were there in your sample they are not coming with the distillate means uh, coming with the ammonia uh, vapor okay they are remaining there in the distill um, that flask um, where from you are distilling okay so interfering ions are uh, not present with ammonia now then nestlerization step is followed in alkaline ph condition i have already told you what is nestler's reagent now what you will do so, for example, you have taken uh, say um, uh, 200 milliliter water sample water, then you have to distill uh, up to such time that at least 100 milliliter should come even more is better uh, comes and then you will be sure that okay, all ammonia has come there in the uh, sulfuric acid. Now, after it is uh, collected there then two things you can do. One thing is you can take uh, the sample from there and then you have to um, say for example, 100 milliliter you are taking and then you have to put the Nestler's reagent there. Immediately it will be uh, forming brown color because of this I told you that because of formation of this one and then what you will do you uh, and another test tube another tube uh, you have to take 100 milliliter of the distilled water and then you have to uh, mix it with the same volume of the Nestler's reagent and then you have to uh, add uh, some source of uh, ammonia nitrogen from outside. What is that? That is nothing but ammonium chloride solution. So, a standard ammonium, solu ammonium chloride solution you prepare where say for example, 1 milliliter of that solution is equivalent to 0 0.05 uh, milligram of nitrogen ammonia nitrogen. So, you have to add drop by drop in that blank solution where you have taken the distilled water and then when you will see the color of your sample water is matching in the sample water also you have added the uh, Nestler's reagent. So, it has already become some brown color and now you are adding uh, in the blank where you have taken distilled water slowly slowly drop by drop the um, ammonium chloride from outside from a burette say. And then after some drop addition you will see that the color is matching. Then you will know how much ammonium chloride you have added. Then you know how much nitrogen ammonia nitrogen is present there okay. and it is same same means color is matching means whatever is there in the sample that is same amount is present in the distilled water where you have added ammonium chloride from outside then it is the same concentration that is why it is called colorimetric color matching colorimetric means color matching. You can extend this to spectrophotometry also because you know that uh, lambda max uh, is this one. So, you can prepare some standard solution of ammonium chloride and then you can add the Nestler's reagent and then uh, the color will be developed. Uh, they will have different intensities according to the concentration of uh, ammonium chloride. Then you have some sample solution there also you add the same volume of uh, this uh, Nestler's reagent and you can match with all the solutions it is calorimetric or otherwise you can make a calibration graph using the spectrophotometer using the standard solutions. Then you match uh, see how much absorbance you are getting for your sample then from the calibration curve. I have already told you cal what is calibration curve in that lecture previous lecture that nitrophenol reduction. Okay. So, uh, you already know how to make the calibration curve in the spectrophotometer. Here also you can use the same principle, but the reactions are different. Okay. Reactions are different. Okay. Uh, so, this is a very good method you can apply it okay. for ammonia nitrogen determination. Now, what is organic nitrogen? Uh, 
uh, what is organic nitrogen? Uh, you can apply the same method, Nestler's method, for to determine the organic nitrogen also. Now, you have to know what is organic nitrogen. All nitrogen present in organic compound may be regarded as organic nitrogen. It may be amino acid, it may be amides, it may be amines, it may be nitro compounds, it may be proteins. Most of the organic compounds containing nitrogen are derivatives of ammonia. So, if I ask you that in protein, what is the oxidation state of nitrogen? Okay. So, a protein is a very complex molecule. So, what is the oxidation state of nitrogen there? What is the oxidation state of nitrogen in ammonia? Minus 3. So, here also it is same. When nitrogen has an oxygen state of minus 3. So, if you de make something to, uh, to decompose the organic uh, part of the molecule by oxidation that um, by oxidation releases the nitrogen as ammonia. Okay. Now, here actually when you, when you um, decompose the organic molecule. Uh, that is say for example, amines or uh, ammonia or not ammonia um, say for example, protein molecules you uh, decompose it, it is producing first step is that it is producing the ammonia. Okay. There it is not oxidation, but later stage you can see to make the reaction faster a catalyst so this is the degraded decomposition. Okay. So, to make this it is a very complex molecule. So, you are degrading it, you are decomposing it to ammonia it is a very tough work, tough job. Okay. So, it is it takes time also to make the reaction faster a catalyst such as mercury 2 plus or copper sulphate is used. This is a catalyst you have already learnt what is catalyst it makes a reaction faster okay. and then it is explained using some uh, some uh, a typical example this is the alanine you know this is the amino acid alanine alpha amino acid which is Mm, oxidized by sulfuric acid in presence of catalyst uh, for sufficient time till all the organic matter is completely oxidized. Okay. It is the actually nitrogen is, uh, is not uh, the oxidation state is not changing for nitrogen, but for carbon you can see that carbon is going to be carbon dioxide sulfur of that uh, where from it is coming sulfur dioxide is coming from uh, sulfuric acid. So, you can see here this is very uh, nice change you can see once the organic nitrogen is released as ammonia nitrogen it can be measured in a similar way to that followed by the determination of ammonia nitrogen by Nessler's method. So, distillation of the in the Gerlach's flask you have to do, but then here uh, sulfuric acid concentrated sulfuric acid you have to add to the solution okay, where you have some organic nitrogen present. Then you have to do it for sufficient time you have to heat it at high temperature you can see 360 degree centigrade okay, till the organic matter is completely oxidized. Okay. How do you know this? You will see lot of fumes are coming out okay, because of this sulfuric acid lot of fumes are coming out first stage you will see that it has become black because of the formation of carbon. Okay. It is decomposed, so carbon is formed and then carbon dioxide will be formed ultimately you will see that the black color has gone it has become transparent solution then you will uh, fumes are also gone. So, in that stage you can tell that okay, the complete decomposition has occurred and then this is the products that uh, these are the products that is present. Okay. So, you can see here from complex molecule it has come like this. Now, it is ammonia nitrogen. So, previously I explained uh, the how to determine the ammonia nitrogen. So, you have to follow the same process by using the Nessler's method first you have to distill it um, in Gerlach's flask then you have to collect it in sulfuric acid and then you, you can um, you can uh, take some aliquot. Uh, de definite volume of the aliquot and then you can um, you, you can add the Nessler's reagent to get the color so, the same way. Okay. Now, uh, how we can determine the nitrate nitrogen that is also Nessler's method, but here uh, you, you, ha you have uh, understood that um, in the Nessler's method we need ammonia okay, or uh, ammonia nitrogen. 
So, nitrate nitrogen is not ammonia nitrogen, it is present as nitrate or even nitrite, okay. uh, it is uh, nitrite also, okay. nitrate nitrogen or nitrite nitrogen. So, how will you convert it to ammonia nitrogen? By reduction, simple. Okay. So, how will you reduce it? Determination of nitrate nitrogen or nitrite nitrogen is one of the most difficult task, it is very difficult for the analytical chemist or the environmental engineers. So, nitrates and nitrites present in water can be reduced to ammonia by nascent hydrogen, you know nascent hydrogen right, nascent hydrogen very active reducing agent. How will you do it? The reduction of nitrate by nascent hydrogen can be done in different ways, this is one example, it is by Dever dash alloy. What is Dever dash alloy? Here you see alloy you know there are many metals, so copper is there, aluminum is there, zinc is there and strong alkaline condition, alkaline solution. So, if you use this um, um, Dever dash alloy in strongly alkaline medium then um, here it will produce the nascent hydrogen and then it will reduce uh, nitrate to ammonia or nitrite to ammonia. So, now you are getting the ammonia nitrogen and now you can apply the same method. Another reducing agent may be zinc, zinc copper, this zinc copper um, this is also some type of alloy, um, you can prepare it by preparing zinc by, pro, um, by, by putting zinc granules to copper sulphate solution, you will see immediately copper is uh, the blue color copper is de deposited on zinc. Then after keeping uh, keeping from some time in acid condition, if you use then it will produce the nascent hydrogen and then you have to follow the same method. Um, after the uh, reduction, then you have to follow the same method as you have done for ammonia nitrogen determination. Now, say for example, you have in your sample all three different types of nitrogen, but you want to know how much is an ammonia nitrogen, how much is organic nitrogen and how much is um, nitrate nitrogen. Then you have to uh, do it in step wise fashion, first you have to uh, take the same sample you determine the ammonia nitrogen. So, ammonia nitrogen is gone there, after that you take the same sample from the gel dust flask, then you do the organic nitrogen and finally, you do the uh, ammonia nitro, uh, that nitrate nitrogen. So, step wise you can do, because um, if you just want to um, do the nitrate nitrogen first, then ammonia nitrogen will also come there, that is why uh, it will not be correct, okay. so, you have to do step wise fashion, but method is same, but only thing uh, initially you have to convert it okay, to ammonia nitrogen. There are other methods also, say for example, some spectrophotometric method, this is most simple method um, by using the spectrophotometer, um, by using the diazotization method, what is diazotization? Diazotization, diazo compound, N double bond N, diazo compound, it has very strong color. In textile dyes, you will see that 90 percent dyes are having the diazo group, N double bond N group, they are having very um, intense color okay. and, uh, and then um, what you will do actually there are two steps in the step 1 you see sulfur anil amide you will take and then nitrous acid which is also nitrous acid means HNO2. Okay. So, it is nitrite okay. it is in acid form because you are acid using acid. So, it will ultimately it will be nitrous acid, but, but it is a method for nitrite determination. So, nitrous acid then uh, 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 they will react to form the diazonium salt, diazonium salt and then this diazonium salt will, uh, will react with this compound N 1 naphthyl ethylene diamine dihydrochloride to form a red colored azo dye. So, diazo compound to azo dye uh, uh, which is colored. Okay. So, uh, ultimately this is the colored compound that will be formed and this you can um, uh, uh, measure uh, the absorbance you can measure in the spectrophotometer. So, basically it is a very um, means uh, quantitative method you can use it. The same method can be applied for nitrate analysis or total 
as nitrite plus nitrate nitrogen after cadmium reduction. So, this is basically a method for uh, nitrite uh, determination, but if you have nitrate then you can convert the nitrate to nitrite first by some reduction this is cadmium reduction cadmium amalgam actually used and then finally, it is the uh, nitrate plus nitrite you are getting total if there is any nitrite then you will get total, but if there is no nitrite then you will get the nitrate. So, basically it is the same method, but uh, another step is there that is the reduction step. This method uh, this is ultraviolet spectrophotometric method for nitrate this is a UV range okay, 220 nanometer this range is not very good, but um, some people use it because it is the most simple method but you have to have this type of spectrophotometer ultraviolet uh, uh, range also should be there for determination that is UV visible spectrophotometer uh, it is costly uh, it is much costlier than the visible spectrophotometer, but uh, not that costly. So, we can use it no problem then nitrate electrode is also there this is the very simple method uh, you have electrode you can just put it in the solution and you can get the uh, concentration, but uh, the shelf life of this electrode is not uh, much may be one year or two year maximum and it is costly also. So, um, but it is very user friendly you do not have to do anything uh, only calibration and uh, measurement that is it. So, these are also applicable. Now, um, as a reference I can tell you these two books uh, one is the Sauer McCarthy book that uh, many times you have seen as a reference and then uh, A K Das Asim K Das this is environmental chemistry with green chemistry and this is uh, the publisher um, this book is also very good you can consult this book. Now, conclusion in this lecture uh, what I have uh, shown that nitrogen exists in water in four different forms which are of interest to the environmental engineers estimation of ammonia nitrogen, organic nitrogen, nitrite nitrogen and nitrate nitrogen are discussed. So, this, this is basically analytical chemistry part to know how much nitrogen what is the dif different types of nitrogen present in the sample water. Thank you.